and cutting edge sophistication. An impressive range and the power of over 500 horses stampeding at a whisper. It's 100% electric and 100% BMW. BMW, the ultimate electric driving machine. Hurry in to lease the 2024 BMW i4 eDrive 35 for $4.99 per month. If you've been hurt in an accident and you need results, call Sweet James. Here are just some of the recent wins for our injured clients. Call the firm that wins big. Call Sweet James. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. Police arrest a local man who ran from the scene of a car crash that injured members of his own family, including a baby. Details on what happened just ahead. Good morning, I'm Annie Rose Ramos in Hollywood, where hundreds upon hundreds of protesters gathered just before the Academy Awards show, coming up what they were calling for and why they came here to have their voices heard. That's next. I'm Eric Spillman. The state of Georgia holds its primary election tomorrow, and both President Biden and former President Trump understand how important the state could be in November. The latest on the campaign, coming up. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. A photo of the Princess of Wales and her children causing controversy this morning why Kate Middleton issued an apology. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin. New here at 8 o'clock. Seemingly no apologies from the Oscars. A really, really successful evening. We have more Oscar highlights coming your way. Plus, sitcom star Niambi Niambi talks about this new revived version of Night Court. Everybody seems to like it. He's on it. He'll be here live. Beautiful shot coming in from the beach. Mostly clear skies out there. You got the surfers out already. People uh, using the uh, bike path and the walking and jogging. Just a great morning at the beaches. 63 coastal downtown Los Angeles with a high of 67, 66 in the San Fernando Valley. High desert 62, 65 in the Inland Empire. In Orange County, one degree warmer at 66 degrees. Traffic and ginger. Yeah, we're going to get to some good news here in just a second, but let's make sure that everybody is well aware of some of the closures that continue because this rock slide happened at about 1130 last night. And so when you're waking up and you're thinking, I'm going to take PCH, yeah, no, actually, you're not going to be able to because we know the closures continue. We heard from Aaron Myers that a geologist needs to assess the situation. So the closure here, PCH between Big Rock over to Los Flores Canyon Road and then vice versa. They may have kind of shortened the um, closure, but doesn't really matter because with this being shut down here, we saw some really heavy and extensive delays. And now hopefully the word is out that you cannot get onto this stretch of PCH Topanga Canyon closure. That closure, of course, still from PCH over to Grandview. And that's been the case for that landslide. Here's that good news to report. OK, so if your plans normally take you onto this 91, we can cancel that Sigler to reopen up the lanes eastbound side of the 71. Right lane had been blocked with an outstanding Sigler that was actually supposed to go until about uh, for 10 more minutes. The lanes have reopened, but the drive is really tough, almost worse than before it was a cleared signal. We'll still keep our eyes, though, on all the things that are popping up for your drive on this Monday. I'll send it back to you guys. And the Oscar goes to... Goes to... Goes to... Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. The Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer uh, dominating the 96th Academy Awards last night, taking home seven Oscars, including Best Picture. The film also earned honors for Best Actor, which went to Killian Murphy. Best Supporting Actor went to Robert Downey Jr. Christopher Nolan won Best Director. Emma Stone and Davon Joy Randolph also walked away with Oscars last night. More on that in a moment. But first, some people ran into issues getting to the Dolby Theater yesterday. On top of street closures, they had to navigate around hundreds of demonstrators holding a protest just outside of the venue. They were demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. KTLA's Annie Rose Ramos live in Hollywood with more on that. Annie Rose, good morning. Hey, Frank, good morning to you. That's right. Before Hollywood Boulevard was filled with celebrities, it was filled with hundreds upon hundreds of protesters, some of them making it right up to the red carpet, blocking the street, keeping those celebrity guests from getting here on time. It is thought that is why the award show started a couple minutes late, as many as five minutes late. Police calling for those protesters to disperse as those protesters continue to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. Here today to disrupt the Academy Awards because we know it is a giant distraction from the ongoing genocide in Gaza. Ceasefire now. That's that's the main thing right now. Kids are dying there. No food, no water, nothing. And uh, it's a heartbreaking. 
Protesters began to gather outside the Dolby Theater at around 10 a.m. Sunday morning, slowing the arrival of stars on the red carpet. Some of the protesters even shouting shame to the celebrities trying to get to the show, holding signs that say no awards for genocide. Others denouncing what they called Hollywood's active support of the U.S.-funded Israeli war in Gaza. And inside the theater, a quieter form of protest. Celebrities, including Billie Eilish and Mark Ruffalo, wearing red pins, calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. The red pins distributed by Artists for Ceasefire, the same group that organized an open letter signed by stars like Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lopez and sent to President Biden in October demanding a ceasefire and the release of any hostages being held captive by the terrorist group Hamas. Poor Things actor Rami Youssef speaking more about those pins. We're calling for immediate, permanent ceasefire in Gaza. We're calling for peace and justice, lasting justice for the people of Palestine. Uh, and I think it's a universal message of just let's stop killing kids. Uh, let's not be part of more war. No one's ever looked back at war and thought a bombing campaign was a good idea. And so to be surrounded by so many artists who are willing to lend their voice, uh, the list is growing. A lot of people are going to be wearing these pins tonight. And it's because we want to kind of use where we're at to speak to people's hearts. Yesterday's protest took place on the first day of Ramadan, a holy month for Muslims. It was also a kind of deadline. The White House and other world leaders pushing for a ceasefire to be established by then, but that just did not happen. Roughly 130 hostages are still being held by Hamas as the death toll in Gaza surpasses 31,000, according to its health ministry. At least 25 people have died of starvation there. The U.S. Army delivering aid by air and is beginning to build a pier off the Palestinian coast to deliver food aid that way. Way too. All right, back here live at Hollywood and Highland, you can see efforts are underway to reopen the street. Crane pulling that concrete barrier onto this truck as they start to remove everything that was built up here for the Oscars. In the meantime, LAPD saying that it took hours for those protesters to peacefully disperse, but they only arrested one person. Reporting live from Hollywood, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Andy Rose, we thank you for that. A five-month-old is in critical condition after a violent crash in Hyde Park. A car carrying a family of four hit a power pole at the intersection of 52nd and Crenshaw Boulevard. This was early Sunday morning. According to the LAPD, the father tried to run from the scene, leaving his injured family behind the woman and five-month-old child inside the car in critical condition this morning. The couple's seven-year-old child also in the vehicle at the time of the crash and did complain of body pain. Father was arrested. He also suffered injuries in the crash and had to be hospitalized. It is not clear why he tried to run from the scene. Developing news here from Glendora. That's where one person was successfully rescued after their vehicle went off the road. The car ended up sliding 200 feet off Glendora Mountain Road around 1 a.m. this morning. One person managed to climb up the hillside to flag down help. Firefighters used a rope system to reach the other person still trapped inside the vehicle, hoisted him out using a helicopter. He was taken to the hospital in unknown condition. Cause of the crash is under investigation. Former President Donald Trump and President Biden could clinch their respective nominations as soon as tomorrow. That's when Georgia holds its presidential primary. KTLA's Eric Spillman in the newsroom now with the latest. Eric, good morning. Morning, Jessica. We'll get to Georgia in just a minute. First, though, President Biden rolls out a new TV ad today in which he addresses his age. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. The Biden campaign plans to spend $30 million blanket the, blanketing the airwaves with that commercial. Biden will travel to New Hampshire, Wisconsin, and Michigan this week. He's hoping to keep the momentum going from his State of the Union last week. He plans to call for higher taxes on the wealthiest Americans and accuse Republicans of wanting to cut Social Security and Medicare. In Georgia over the weekend, Biden criticized Trump for cozying up to dictators. He bragged about calling Xi Jinping a king. He called Putin and he said, do whatever the hell you want to our allies. I'm not making these, I'm not making these quotes up. When he says he wants to be a dictator, I believe him. 
Donald Trump held a rally in Rome, Georgia, and lashed out at Biden's immigration policies, blaming him for the killing of Lakin Riley, the nursing student who was found dead on the University of Georgia campus last month. A migrant from Venezuela who came to this country illegally has been charged with her murder. This morning, Trump was interviewed on CNBC. He was asked about TikTok, the Chinese-owned social media app. While he was president, Trump wanted to ban TikTok. He said it was a threat to national security, but now he says banning TikTok would only help Facebook. Frankly, there are a lot of people on TikTok that love it. There are a lot of young kids on TikTok who, who will go crazy without it. There are a lot of uh, users. There's you know a lot of good, and there's a lot of bad with TikTok. But the thing I don't like is that without TikTok, you can make Facebook bigger. And I consider Facebook to be an enemy of the people, along with a lot of the media. Back to the campaigns. Both Biden and Trump recognize the importance of the state of Georgia, which holds its primary tomorrow. In 2020, Biden beat Trump in that state by just under 12,000 votes. Trump is under criminal indictment in Georgia for his push to overturn Biden's victory there in 2020. Georgia is a swing state that could determine who wins the general election in November. Frank and Jessica. All right, Eric, thank you for that. Uh, the Mega Millions jackpot once again inching closer to the billion dollar mark. Prize now stands at an estimated $735 million ahead of tomorrow's drawing. Of course, you'll only take home about a third of that. Um, taxes, of course, if you choose the lump sum. This is the sixth largest jackpot in the game's history. Top five were all over $1 billion. Jackpot has been growing since the last winning ticket was sold in December. Your odds of winning are one in 302 million. You only take home a third? A third now? Yeah. Is that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... The year of <laughs> astonishing. <laughs> That's it. My mic was off. But a third, I thought it was like after every like a half. half. Exactly. Yeah. But now a third, gee whiz. <laughs> Our schools must be looking great. <laughs> uh, 12 minutes after 8 o'clock. Hey, good morning, everyone. And here we go on a Monday. Almost, we're just about halfway through the month of March. Incredible. We did the time change thing already. By the way, too, one of the things, uh, and uh, a lot of people do, and I did it all over the weekend, change your batteries and your smoke detectors. Kind of remind you, so you, you'll never look up and go, gee, when was the last time I changed? If you do it every time we do the time change.